what it has inside and the fact that we found it in the wild is what's keeping this the, the fuel to the fire coming is that we have this normally a straight embedded device uh, that would have been would have had dedicated processors etc um, for tasks but instead what we have is what would normally be from an IP cam platform shoved into the webcam. My current theory is it had to do with the pandemic and that they shifted the production, probably slapdashed the engineering into creating this webcam and then pushing it out into the market. Not to mention the chip at this point I've found out is getting a little bit long in the tooth. So it's a in one way, it's very much an over-engineered webcam. It would be a little bit like, I don't know, putting a V8 in a Ford Fiesta, right? So it's a mismatch. But as a result, for, you know, regardless of how you look at it, whether it's because it was cheap or uh, whatever, it's an odd duck. It's an odd duck to see in the wild. And that's what happens when you start looking. And in this episode of the Hacker Homestead, putting a camera on a stick. I'm handy, connecting our computer to the camera using this TTL adapter. We'll see the U-Boot loader, we'll see a Linux kernel, and then we're going to log in as root to it. Grotesque soldering. Come on with me. Hi. Mistakes were made with the soldering. The DSD Tech USB to TTL serial adapter with an FTDI FT232RL chip. If you don't set this jumper right here from 5 volts to 3.3 volts, you could have a really bad day. Oh, it's about $12 on Amazon. Link below. Uh, this $21 soldering kit uh, will get you by. But it's what I'll be using uh, to get this to work. This is the microscope that I'm using. It actually has a battery built into it. You can take it out for you know inspection on something you can't fit on the tray. It's got an SD card slot, it's got USB, I've actually captured it via OBS before. It records videos and does pictures. Quite nice. I'm going to go ahead and roll the soldering footage. You may want to have the children leave the room. Success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. And it works. Winston Churchill. <clears throat> Making something that's stable to be able to test with is pretty important. Uh, so here we go. These, this is the test harness that I created. The, you hook the leads up right here. You've got the webcam on one end, and then I used painter's tape to route the, the cables, make the connections there in the middle. End of it has hookup wires for the TTL adapter. What I discovered is there is a universe inside there. Let's explore. I found this particularly interesting. I'm sorry, for context, this is networking. Uh, now, within the Linux kernel, you generally have to have some sort of networking, so that may be the reason that it's in there. You can't just take out networking from the Linux kernel. Anti-copy not found. <laughs> oh, snap. I did not see this before. Oh, man. An FPGA board is ready. <laughs> there may be, albeit very small, but there may be an FPGA inside my camera. So uh, one of the commenters 
on the videos there's like risk five is the future and i totally believe that i think it's fantastic and you know processors should be just as open source as the software that they run fpgas are where my head's at for the future for the uninitiated an fpga is a field programmable gate array fpgas have been used to design new processors they have gotten so good and relatively cheap that you can simulate older processors on them as if they were the real thing. Okay, we'll move along. So we're logged in as we're logged in as root to this web camera. Not an IP cam, not a single board computer kit. This out in the wild webcam has Linux running on it, and I am now logged in as root. And oh, this is a crufty screen. I'm going to type in clear. Oh, snap. It even has clear on it. Now, anybody who's dealt with like networking devices and other kind of hardware over the years, the idea that you could clear the terminal, like, I mean, this is supporting. This is supporting command sequences for modern terminals. This is not just your average serial terminal. It's super exciting. I know I may just be old, and but I, I think we live in a age of abundance. All right, uh, let's try some other basic commands. PWD, cool. LS, aha, I have my expected file system here. Let's, uh, let's try and cat something. So let's go into proc, CPU, info. Oh, it's got auto tap. It's got auto complete. Like I'm in bash. <laughs> Am I in bash? I don't know. Let's cat this. All right. So here's our processor details. Super exciting. Yep. It is very exciting. I, I, I can't um, continue at the moment or I can't dive into this at the moment. Is it bash? Let's type in set. Well, look at that. Okay, so I've there's my library path. Um, oh, right, I forgot. This is BusyBox. How did I know that? Well, uh, I can. Oh, let's also do uname a. This is like a kid in a candy store. Okay, so let's go into the bin directory and see what we've got kind of out of the box. I'm gonna. See how these are all, oh, it's BusyBox. So BusyBox is, the best I'm gonna, I, I can describe it right now is like a Linux distribution. It, and more importantly, it has all of these commands linked to it. Like um, it bundles up all of these commands. As a result, look at that. I have, I have VI, mm, my favorite editor. Uh, yeah. Okay, I don't have it. Okay, whatever. We've got these things in BusyBox. Well, that's nice. That's very useful. Is it in here? Do we have find? Oh, we do have find. Nice. Oh, we even have tar. Do we have grep? Oh, we have grep. Um, this is just so exciting. All right. I'm going to find grep for base. Yeah. Okay. So we do have base 64. Sorry. That's a spoiler or whatever. Yep. Let's go back to our home directory, which is root. Now let's go into Etsy and check out and at D, well, there's so many cool things in here. Let's look at, look, I think we have, um, we have less as well. All right, let's just shell. So, now this is, is likely in the read-only file system. That doesn't mean that we won't be able to modify it later, but there is that init app, or sorry, init app init.sh. App. Okay. Oh, okay. Run the init script. That's in system. So let's go into system. 
and it oh there it is we're installing some kernel modules running anti-copy you camera I'm not familiar with anti-copy but I'm gonna guess <laughs> it has something to do with I don't know per, um, well anyway doesn't really matter all right we're just we're trying to do the survey here uh, now if I do mount boop 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 just type in mount we see the file systems uh, we've got some read write uh, but this squash FS is read only and these are system things but look at this we have read write so that means that this file system is read write oh here let's do dash H oh, oh hold on we even have the <laughs> command history Wow do we have the yeah look at that it's just eating up all sorts of RAM looks like here what we're what we have is 1.6 megabytes available the total file system for system is 3.3 that's important because if we go into bin here is our U camera application now I don't actually know what ADBD stands for normally I, I would think of it as an Android thing because from my hack my like Android <laughs> hacking uh, normally that's the Android debugging bridge Demon. I don't know what it is here if I just try and run it uh, we have this service and the socket started I have no idea what it does I will admit that now LRZ and LSZ those are compression decompression and and you can use them also in conjunction with uh, transferring files so like if I just do an LRZ dash dash help and we go control what is it control a escape or copy mode we also could have piped that to less but see to receive files with Z modem Y modem X modem protocol one of the things that I love about not only ham radio but hardware hacking for these things is uh, it, it because of the simplicity so the things that I used to deal with 20 25 years ago uh, where we're hacking via via modems and serial protocols uh, those have all been shrunk down into these little micro universes right so um, LRZ is is using Z modem Y modem X modem protocols are all binary transfer protocols used in the olden days Okay, so we have U camera, and I mean, like, I, c I can run it, but it's going to bomb out. Oh, look, anti copy verify, okay. Video start. That's great. So, can I can I kill that? Okay, yes, I, I can kill that, but more importantly, let's do a PS e EF. Sorry, my hands are off the keyboard here. Oh, um, PS. PS dash L. Okay, that's cool. And control A, escape. Let's go back into copy mode. And you'll notice we have U camera right there. Right? Copy mode aborted. Okay, I'm getting better at the screen back and forth. Uh, so I can kill. Do we have a kill all? we do kill all you camera and pretty sure it's just gonna start back up so yeah 
That's cool. But <clears throat> it's being launched via that init script. Can can we modify the init script? Well, vi app init. Now I don't want to do anything too destructive here yet. I do like to make try and make calculated moves, but let's just add a comment here because we also want to see if this file system is persistent. And I'm going to say, hello, Mr. Hatter Handy. All right. I'm going to write and quit. And if I open that file right back up again, is it there? Yes, it's there. Okay. What happens if I issue a reboot? Root. Let's go into system. And vi init app init. Oh, look, it's there. Okay, now it's not a fair test. Maybe it was in RAM, right? Even though we rebooted, just bear with me here. So, I'm going to unplug the device. Boot it back up. Root. Yep. Less system. Was it init? App init? <gasps> Look, well, hello, Mr. Hatter. It looks like we'll be chatting again. I don't want to make too many modifications because there is a limited lifespan to um, this particular kind of NOR flash memory. Uh, but we made a modification to this device and it's got Linux on it. And we found the application that's running, which means we could write our own application and run it on here. If I go into slash system bin. Let's look at this real quick. U camera is 685 kilobytes. How, what do we do next? This is a little bit like playing Zork, right? Like, do I go to the town? Do I go inside the house? Uh, strategies for next step or the choices are abundant. In theory, we could replace uCamera or modify it. Hex dump uCamera. This is going to be crazy. In theory, we could modify the existing application, but that would take an incredible amount of time that I'm not going to spend. Here, I'm going to control C. All right. Well, that was, oh, yeah, this thing's so responsive, but we could write an application and then maybe name it uCamera or just change the app init script. In conclusion, we logged in. Linux, we're on this camera. What's next? And there's a challenge there because I only have the serial link. So how am I going to get an application out? How am I going to get an application in? There's no compiler on here. close out with that for today. Please make sure if you want to find out what happens next in this adventure, like the video and subscribe, do the bell icon thing, I guess, and happy hacking. <laughs>